Sumbul says, can we take an oath on the Quran? If you look in the books of fiqh, you will find that taking an oath is something of great seriousness. And Allah Azza wa Jal told us that those who take oath falsely so that they can gain something of these worldly materialistic things around, Allah Azza wa Jal would not look at them, would not speak to them, would not purify them, and would punish them severely on the day of judgment. Because taking Allah's name in vain is a very serious issue in Islam. So now, from that, if you go to Kitab al-Shahadat, for examples, for example, in Sahih al-Bukhari, you will find that in the book or the chapter dealing with testimonies, he made a chapter on the ruling on taking an oath at a specific place of importance, a sacred place, such as Maqam Ibrahim in the Haram, or Al-Multazam near the Black Stone. And he says that some scholars, some of the Salaf, used to think and believe that an oath at such a sacred place is far greater than any other. Others in Medina, for example, and this was reported among the companions, whenever there was a dispute over something that was big, and one had to take an oath, had to swear by Allah that he is not the perpetrator or he is not the one who took the money, etc., just to clear his reputation. And to win in that case, they used to say, don't take the oath here at court, go to the member of the Prophet ﷺ in the Masjid of Medina, as was reported with Zayd ibn Thabit and Uthman ibn Affan and others. So scholars, some of them concluded that whatever makes the oath greater and more serious in effect is better. Others, in another chapter in, in Sahih al-Bukhari and others, he also emphasized on the time. So we have, for example, in the Quran that the testimony after Asr prayer. So they say that the time also has some importance. From these two, the scholars have split it. Some say that only the name of Allah is sufficient because other scholars said, no, you have to add more to that. So the vast majority say that saying, Wallahi, I didn't do that. This is sufficient. Some say, no, you have to repeat Wallahi three times. Wallahi, Wallahi, Wallahi. Others say that you have to glorify Allah more by saying, Wallahi, the creator of the universe, the knower, of the present and the past and the future, uh, the one who gives life, life and death, the, you praise Allah. The more you praise Allah, the greater the impact of the oath is. So the person giving that oath becomes fearful of Allah. Rather than saying, Wallah, I didn't do it. But if you glorify Allah, the giver of life and death, the provider, the one who holds people accountable on the day of judgment, the owner and the sustainer of this universe, then the person, fear of Allah would enter his heart and he would refrain from lying. So this is what scholars say, because they've divided. Some say, saying Allah is enough. Some say, no, you have to praise Allah more and more and glorify him so that the oath would be of great impact. This leads us to putting your hand on the Qur'an. This was never done by the Prophet ﷺ. It was never done by the great companions of the Prophet ﷺ. And it was not done by the Tabi'een. 
So to place the hand over the mushaf is not part of the sunnah. And if you go an extra mile and say it is actually an innovation, you wouldn't be far from the truth. Though there are scholars who said that it is to emphasize the importance and the danger and the greatness of the oath by Allah's name. Yes, some scholars have said that. But when we retract and look back and find that neither the Prophet والسلام, nor his companions or the tabi'een had ever done such a thing, we know then, then this is not part of the religion and one should refrain from it. Having said that, if a person was forced, like in some courts, for example, or it was a li a, a, an issue or a matter of life and death, and he was forced to swear by placing his hand on the mushaf, inshallah, he would not be sinful for that, and Allah knows best.